So let's talk about what a workflow is. A workflow is basically a flow of work. It's a way of working. That's all it is. And workflows can be on the code end of things. So for instance, if you're doing web apps, as an example, you would set up the way that you would start all your projects. So you don't have to sort of think about how you're going to do it. That's why the nerds invented web frameworks. So Python, they have Django and Flask and PHP. They have Laravel and Cake PHP. For PHP, I would use Laravel. For Python, I'd probably use Django. Maybe you might use Flask depending on the project. Java has Spring, et cetera, et cetera. So it's great. You're, you're in a great time now because these web frameworks, these libraries of code, if you were, are all there for you to you know, set up a project much more quickly than trying to do everything from scratch. Because we figured out over the years, over the last 20 years, the developer community has figured out the optimal way of creating web apps and websites. So it's all there, even with the template. So let's say you're just doing pure front-end design. If you, don't know what, if you don't know what that is, you can check videos on this channel. I'm sure I explained it somewhere. If you're doing front-end designs, there are frameworks and templates that you can leverage there as well, again, to speed up these things. Now, you've got all kinds of choices out there, and I suggest certain choices in other videos, but the point is, when you're freelancing, you pick a particular framework or a particular couple of libraries that you're always going to use or going to use most of the time, and that's part of your workflow. Another part of the workflow has nothing to do with code. It has a lot to do with client communications, client communications. So part of the things that I offer is those templates, like the initial client proposal template, the, the, the contract template, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, having these in place and adhering to these, using these, are just going to save you a lot of time. So what's the point of all these workflows? The point of the workflows is that it's going to eliminate, it's going to reduce errors and mistakes by quite a bit. It's going to make your life a lot easier as a freelancer, as a developer in general, and it's going to maximize the amount of money you can make. Once you start implementing uh, refined workflows, you're going to see your profitability would just go pew, like this. So when you first start freelancing, when I first started freelancing, I was still learning the ropes. I was still learning how to put together client-related workflows and project-building-related workflows. And uh, fortunately, I had a bit of I had a business background, so client-related workflows was easier for me to put together because I had been a client for so many years. I had, I had been the client as the business owner. Um, in terms of project-related workflows, the web was the Wild West back then. I literally created my own Laravel. I created my own Spring. I created my own uh, Django, as an example. My framework, web framework, which was for Java, Java JSP servlets, um, it was very effective for me because it, it took me like a year or so to develop the code base, but then all my projects were based on this framework, and it was based on the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule tells you that 80% uh, of the work is found in 20% of the, of the stuff that you have to do. Let me, I'll restate that. 80% of your time on a project is in 20% of the things that you have to do for a project. You're going to see that over and over again. If you do the detailed time tracking that you should do for every project, you're going to find that, you know, it's always this that takes up most of the time on the project. This is like narrow 20% of the job, however you classify it. Usually it's the database interactions of a lot of apps. And so my framework was based on uh, on the 80-20 rule. I didn't try to make this monolithic, huge, f complex framework that did everything. What I did, my framework was simple in that it solved that crucial 20% of the job that took up 80% of the time. And by having that in place, I was able to be so much more productive. So instead of a job taking me 100 hours to do, I could literally do it in 10, 20 hours. It's unbelievable. So, But I would then bid, instead of bidding 100 hours, I would bid 80 hours or 70 hours. And so I was very competitive. So the people loved it, but I was only doing it in a fraction of the time because I had all these, I had my own framework, I had the workflows in place. And I remember talking to an old developer buddy of mine and I, and I was feeling a little, I said, you know, is it, is it right that I spent a year or so building this framework and now I'm so much more productive? You know, is it right that I, I, 
and I still charge what would it cost me to build it without having my framework? And he said to me, no, that's your investment. If you spend a whole bunch of time developing workflows and frameworks and processes that speed up your productivity quite a bit, that's your that's your investment in your business in yourself and the f and, and so it's it makes sense that you charge for that it's your intellectual property so yes instead of bidding 100 hours and taking 100 hours to build a project i could do it personally in t 10 20 hours but i would charge them 80, 80 80 hours 70 hours that's a little trick there and they were getting getting a great deal cuz they were comparing my rates to other people so i was being very competitive and at the end of the day by using the framework as it turns out, my code base was even better. My code base was even better. So that's a huge, huge advantage of uh, what's going on here. That's a huge, huge advantage of developing workflows. You make a lot more money. You do a lot more work in less time, much less headaches. Because imagine you sit down, instead of having to reinvent the wheel every time, you sit down and you just go, boom, 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 boom. You, 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 you have your workflows, you have your frameworks, you have your templates in place. And you, and, you, and you just lay it out, and then you can just move forward on those tracks. Very easy. It's kind of like if you're going on a drive, on a trip, and you have a GPS and you know exactly you know how to get from point A to point B to your destination it's a lot less stress on you right because you know I just go you know, boom 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 I just have to go there but imagine you're not sure where you're gonna go you're not sure how you're gonna get there it's a lot more stressful you gotta stop you gotta look you know in the old days we look at a map and you gotta try again you get oh, I made a wrong turn same thing in development it's a very similar process if you have frameworks in place workflows in place you're gonna avoid all that indecision all that anxiety uh, in terms of how the project is going to unroll, it just, it just, that's how it works. It's such an important thing, rather, to have the frameworks and the workflows in place to maximize your productivity. So what happened to me, to uh, close off this very long vlog, uh, after that first gig, I started getting more and more gigs, started doing repeat work for the same clients, then I uh, hired people, had people working for me and then that freed up my time to be able to explore other avenues to start building my own software my own web apps my own websites and that's how the whole killer sites thing came about killer sites was established in 1996 i picked it up in 2000 i took over and i started building out the killer sites network killersites.com killerphp.com and other sites eventually leading to studioweb.com now studioweb.com i registered that domain 1998 for my web design studio studio web and uh, I eventually repurposed it for what studio web is now as an educational platform and uh, this was all made possible via learning to code when I was even planning to be a coder and then becoming a freelancer which was, is a great way to get into business because it teaches you business processes. There's no major cost of getting into it. And then it allowed me to f make a lot of extra money and free up time so I could start building out uh, another business. Now, f don't think that freelancing is just a stepping stone. A lot of people freelance their entire career, lawyers and doctors and dentists, they're essentially freelancers. And you got a lot of f developer freelancers and high-end UX freelan freelancers and UI freelancers, and that's their career, and they make a lot of money. You can make much more money as a freelancer than you can working for somebody, no doubt. Just think of it this way, and I won't go into any more details because this vlog is getting pretty long. Uh, excuse me, when an employer hires you and they pay you X, they have to charge at least 2X for your time. So if they're charging, if they're billing you out at $100 the hour, I'll just depending on where you live it could be ten dollars if you're in a third world it could be a hundred dollars in different if they're billing you out meaning they're selling your time at a hundred the hour that means they got to make two hundred the hour um let me let me let me rephrase that if they're paying you the equivalent of a hundred the hour i'm using round numbers to make it simple they got to bill you out at two hundred the hour for them to make money because there's all this overhead and stuff associated with having employees so that means you as a freelancer should be able to bill at the rate that your employer was billing you out that's the $200 an hour if that makes sense so 
huge advantages to being a freelancer, huge advantages. Keep that in mind. All right, I think I'm going to go explore around, see what's going on in this park. Bye-bye.